only, only to be followed by Willow Nightingale versus Ruby Soho for the Women's Owen Hart Final. Oh boy. Um, uh, you know, after you know, 50 you didn't minutes, like it. Just it was like fifty-eight minutes of like holding your breath, just incredible action. Uh, there was a moment in um, uh, this match when uh, Lance Storm was called out, which is pretty cool. But yep. um, like Ru- uh, Ruby grabbed this uh, foreign object and uh, handed it to Willow when Aubrey wasn't looking, and Aubrey blamed, blamed Willow for it. Just a classic move. Just love that part. But for the most part, yeah, I could pass. Yeah, it was a hard act to follow, quite frankly. And, you know, they they had a fun. I thought the match was fine. Mm-hmm. I thought that the, uh, you know, the crowd was into it as well as they could be after after the first match. They tried to use the spray can gimmick, and the referee grabbed it, and Ruby hit her kick, and Willow kicked out, and then she tried the spray paint again, missed, got pounced, and then Willow hit the sit-out powerbomb and, and pinned her. And what I what I did like about it was even though there was a spray can involved for a moment, I mean this was not the outcasts completely ruining the match. So I was happy to see that. And then an hour later, the outcasts completely ruined another match. So I just absolutely cannot escape it. To be and, fair, I think uh, God ruined that match. Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, you know everybody was asking for them to do something with Willow, so they did. Yeah. And uh, Ruby has now lost two years in a row in the finals, and. Uh, I hereby predict that next year, Ruby wins the I, Owen Hart Cup. It's her year. That is my prediction, yes. I love the trope of uh, the referee taking the object away from the heel and then placing it well within reach of the heel under the bottom turnbuckle. Why don't you just throw it out of the ring? Why do they still put it in reach? It's silly. It's stupid. They always end up getting the foreign object again. Come on. Willow won in nine minutes and eight seconds with the powerbomb. Next up, Ricky Starks versus CM Punk for the Owen Cup men's final. Um, I, you know what? I enjoyed the beginning of this match. Uh, actually, no, I enjoyed this whole match. Yeah, I thought it was a little slow in the beginning. Uh, I thought that CM Punk was was treating this guy as a as an amateur, but uh, he was getting the better of him because he was the veteran. And, and I thought it told a little story and it was a little slow, but then as it picked up, it got much better. I thought that overall it was a good match. But uh, the one thing I will say is this was not CM Punk's best performance. Mm-mm. And, you know, I've been very complimentary of, of CM Punk, his work in the ring, but I did not think he looked that great in this match. And I think part of it was he was trying to do a lot of Bret Hart spots, and they just didn't look good. Like, you know, the thing with Bret Hart is he the things that he did looked incredible. And if you're going to do his spots, like, they got to look good. Sure. You, you don't want to be Miz out there trying to do Brian Danielson's spots, and he looks like an idiot. And, God, no. you know, Punk did that uh, the middle rope elbow that Bret does, and my God, that did not look good. And, uh, you know, it, it was fine. It was, it was a good match, but it was not Punk's best match. And then the finish of this match. So they're going back and forth, and Punk goes up top, and he hits a middle rope Hurricane Rana, and Ricky Starks rolls through. They start trading cradles, and then Ricky Starks grabs the ropes and pins CM Punk, okay? And then, like immediately when he gets the pin, the referee counts three and he looks up and he sees Ricky's hand on the ropes. And you look at it, it's Bryce Remsburg. You look at him and he, he gets that look like, and he starts looking around at the people. And I'm like, my God, they're going to reverse the decision. The guy obviously cheated right in front of the referee. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and then they don't. So Punk totally got screwed in this match and the funny thing is he was working as the heel he got a very very mixed reaction and a lot of booze Mm -hmm. he was working as the heel ricky was working as the baby face ricky cheated to win then ricky leaves and jushin liger is there and he's got the uh the cup or whatever and uh you know ricky just snatches it from him and runs off totally disrespecting the legend so 
I was I was like so baffled. Like, why did this happen in front of the referee? Why didn't the referee reverse the decision? Uh, Ricky Starks, who was a babyface, has now turned heel on a sure. heel, who I guess is a babyface and also a heel. And then and then they go the the presentation of the Owen Hart Cup will be done during the Battle of the Belts. I'm like, okay. So we wait, and then, as we'll get to, they end up doing the, the trophy presentation. And to be fair, there is precedent. Because last year, um, I don't know if Britt was a, a heel last year when she won, but I know Adam Cole was at the time. And uh, and they were both, um, you know, total baby faces. And um, during the presentation. And so, you know, it's Ricky's turn to get his cup and his belt and listen to Martha. And he's a total baby face. He's smiling. He's clapping. You know, she gives him the belt. He, he, he kisses her on the cheek. So this show's over, and I ain't got no idea what's going on. I presume that Ricky is now a heel. I presume that maybe Punk and Ricky are going to have another match. Maybe that's Wembley or whatever. But, uh, you know, I, I still feel my idea was best. If Punk was going to lose, he should have lost to Joe. You can do Punk and Joe at the uh, Wembley show. And, uh, you know, Ricky, if, if you know, Ricky's going to win, he can hold the ropes, pin Samoa Joe. You know, I didn't want Joe to lose going into Wembley, but, I mean, I don't know. The whole thing was just kind of weird. I don't know what it was bad, but it was really weird. Just the whole thing was weird. That was the uh, men's final. Yeah, it was the men's final, and it really didn't feel like a final. Um, this is the second outing Punk has just kind of been there. Like, his match with Joe was, was good, but I, I expected better. And, uh, well, uh, to be honest, I expected better of this match. It, it wasn't bad, don't get me wrong, but it was a final. It should have been a little bit more heated. It should have been a little bit more hard-hitting. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. You know, and I will say this, that uh, Ricky Starks, I've seen him as a heel. He's a great heel. So I don't have a sure. problem with him going heel. Sure. But this guy is a baby face. Man, did he have these fans. And they mm. never they never went with him when he was so over as a baby face. And, like, this was their chance to go with him. But now they are kind of going with him, but they also turned him heel, apparently. So I don't know. Whatever. I think, um, I think in the commentary they were treating Ricky Starks, though, as if he was acting like Owen Hart, which would make him a baby face. Except Owen Hart, when he did that, was a heel. <laughs> well, in the frame of this contest, though, if anything related to Owen Hart would be a good thing. I guess. Correct? And, I mean, there were moments when they did, like, the double cross body. And, you know, if oh. CM Punk is being the Bret Hart and Ricky Starks is being the Owen Hart, are, are they trying to recreate, you know, their awesome match together where Owen held the ropes? I did think the... they were going to do a victory roll for the finish. It yeah. was reversed, so, but they did not. But the, the announcers did say that uh, Ricky Starks held the ropes like Owen Hart. And when he stole the trophy from uh, Jushin Thunder Liger, that, you know, Owen was the king of ribs and doing stuff like that. And so they were framing Ricky well, Starks. Well, sure. I mean, like he Owen did Hart. do all of those things, but he did all those things as a heel. And so, you know, I understand that, you know, he was, but, but he would be going heel. I mean, you can't do all of that and then be a baby face with the explanation being that, well, I was copying a guy when he was a, a shithead in storyline. I mean, it's just weird. Um, Ricky Starks won 1945. Yes. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. 
wrestlingobserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.